from corn husks to acorns, there are plenty of age-old ways people have tried to predict what kind of winter weather we can expect each year. Let's start with corn husks. For years, farmers will look at how tight they are to foretell if we could see a rough winter. If the husks were thick and tight, then it was believed that a cold and snowy winter was on the way. The same theory is also used with walnuts or hickory nuts and the thickness of their shell. Kind of like how animals grow thicker fur to stay warm during the winter in the cold environments. What does the science have to say? Well, the way that corn ends up growing and the quality of the crop is mostly dependent on how their growing season went, especially if it was a wet or drier season. One theory states that corn husks become tall and tight during a wetter season as a way to protect themselves from the rain. But a rainy growing season doesn't always mean a bad winter. There are also thousands of different corn species, each with varying genetics that might give them different qualities like tougher husks. So that's another reason that this old myth can't be a reliable method. Another lore states that if there's an abundance of acorns that have fallen, the winter season may be harsh. Scientists speculate that climate is a factor with it varying by tree species and region. Nut producing trees like oak or beech fluctuate with how much they produce. It's a cycle that happens at random every few years, and when they produce an abundance of nuts, it's called a mast year. Seeing more acorns though is more of an indicator of how the past winter was than what the upcoming will be like. Let's look at what causes the leaves to change color. The further that we get into the fall season, we get less and less daylight. This triggers the leaves to stop producing chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the pigment that's found in plants that produces their green coloring. Well, during the spring and summer, more chlorophyll is produced because of the increased amounts in daylight. And as the chlorophyll breaks down, the green pigment fades and it exposes other types of pigments found, like the yellows, oranges, browns, and reds. Not only does the amount of daylight impact the leaf color change, but so do changes in temperatures as it becomes colder further in the season. Another fall weather tale that ties into this is that the earlier the fall colors peak, the milder the winters will be. The color change of leaves can vary per tree or shrub species, but trees that are more damaged, stressed, or just not as healthy due to environmental factors may change sooner than others in its surroundings. The science says that there is no correlation between early color changes in the leaves, its intensity, or how it predicts winter weather. It's all about balance. If there are frequent extreme weather changes early enough, the leaves might not last on the trees before they've even had the time to change. The brightest, longer lasting fall colors usually happen during periods of dry and calm sunny days, along with cool, clear, frost-free fall nights. Halos are these faint white rings that we see show up in the sky both around the sun and the moon. And weather lore halos have been thought to signal wet weather on the way as indicated in the phrase, a ring around the sun or moon means rain or snow is coming soon. What does the science have to say about that? Cirrus clouds are high, wispy clouds mostly made of ice crystals versus the larger water droplets found in most clouds. The halo effect happens when ice crystals refract and reflect the light as the clouds spread thinly across the moon or sun. Most commonly, the light is bent in a way that creates a 22 degree angle or a 22 degree halo. This is not to be confused with a corona, another type of circular shape that also occurs around the moon and sun. They aren't as big as halos and consist of small water droplets, which can give out a different effect and color. Coronas can indicate an increase in moisture. You can't always rely on these phenomena for weather prediction because the location and movement of a weather system is what really influences that. Weather systems usually move from west to east in mid-latitudes, and if the cirrus clouds come from a system that's to our south or north and moves eastward, it'll miss us. But if the system and associated clouds are to our west, there's a good chance that some unsettled weather could come your way. Ever see these fuzzy fellas? According to folklore, the color of a woolly bear caterpillar, known as the woolly worm here in the south, can be used to determine how severe an upcoming winter season could be locally. 
But how did these caterpillars become popular for winter weather predictions? Well, the amount of black versus orange coloring on the caterpillar has been used by some to guess the type of winter that's expected for the year. Blacker coloring meant a more severe winter versus orange representing a more milder winter. The theory was first popularized by Canadian entomologist Dr. Howard C. Curran, who was a curator of insects at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. In 1948, while studying the woolly caterpillar and their color, he noticed that many of the caterpillars he tested had wide orange bands and it so happened to be a milder than average winter that year. His study was then published in the New York Herald Tribune. Some still believe this theory even breaking down the coloring to more specific predictions. If the head end of the caterpillar is dark, the beginning of winter will be severe. If the tail end is dark, then the end of winter will be cold. Others just do it for fun. The coloring can be due to many Many factors such as woolly caterpillar's age, the type of species, and even its feeding habits. So again, can a fuzzy caterpillar be used to predict winter weather? The science tells us no. Humans have always depended on animals as a source for food, clothing, manual labor, and weather prediction. Well, there are several myths or superstitions out there that are related to weather, many of which involve animals. Many of you probably heard the phrase, if cows are lying down, then wet weather is on the way. There is an old superstition that claims that our bone-buying friends are able to predict if it's going to rain or snow. But what's the reasoning behind it? One simple theory is that they do it as a way of preserving dry patches of grass. Other speculations are a bit more complicated. Another theory suggests that cows can sense an increase in air moisture. It claims their legs are microporous and can absorb moisture in the air from the increased relative humidity, which in turn weighs them down. It also assumes that a cow's stomach can detect changes in atmospheric pressure that could indicate rain is on the way, such as low pressure. But where's the science to prove it? Well, actually, there isn't much science at all to back up these theories. Cows could be simply lying down to conserve body heat. They usually spend half the time lying down in any weather, rain, shade, or sun. Or simply, maybe they just want to relax and chew their cud. There's something about those beautiful hues of orange and red that we see during a sunrise or sunset that just make you appreciate what Mother Nature can offer. But a red sunset versus a sunrise could indicate something very different when it comes to weather conditions in the future. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. This phrase stems from a common weather folklore that a red sky during a sunrise is a sign of stormy weather down the road. It's even found in the Bible. Matthew 16, 2 to 3 says, quote, When it is evening, ye say, fair weather, for the heaven is red. And in the morning, foul weather today, for the heaven is red and lowering. There's some science behind what causes the skies to turn a reddish color. Cirrus clouds are much higher in altitude and usually are found ahead of a large storm system. During a sunrise, the thin wispy clouds are high enough to where they catch the light. During sunset, the sun's rays reflect back at the end of the exiting weather system. The red color is caused by sunlight being scattered due to particles and aerosols in the atmosphere when the sun sits low in the horizon. Not every fiery sunrise is a sign of storms coming, but the sign says it may be indicative specifically for weather systems moving from west to east in mid-latitudes. With THB 11, I'm Corrales Ortiz. You may call it controlling the weather, but in scientific terms, it's known as weather modification. Bottom line, it's just a fancy way of explaining how people alter weather conditions on a small or big scale. So let's start with why it's getting so much attention. Over the summer, you may have seen stories about what's called cloud seeding. Weather experts in Dubai launch laser drones, yes, laser drones, to shock rainwater out of the sky and help cool down extremely hot days. While it worked and the area did see some rain, it's not really an exact science, at least yet. Essentially, the process just helps push along the cycle of a rain cloud, but they can't really control things like how much rain an area will get. And this idea of cloud seeding isn't a new one. Since the 1940s, silver iodide and other chemicals have been released by planes up in the atmosphere to help with the development of clouds and help kickstart some rain. 
This method has been primarily used in areas trying to recover from droughts and to help replenish those water supplies, like in Dubai. It can also be used for helping to clear out fog or even reducing the amount of hail in a storm. Here's the problem though. Like we mentioned, cloud seeding isn't that reliable. It's also not that cost effective. Not every cloud can be seeded and it is difficult to know how much rain or snow will be created, especially in more complex cloud systems. So while humans can't exactly control storms or create them out of thin air, we are seeing long-term impacts on our weather brought on by human activity like CO2 emissions. We're talking about the extremes we're seeing when it comes to storms and temperatures. And that's what the science says when it comes to humans controlling the weather.